joy it is to be with you today. Another stormy day up on this Blue Ridge Mountain. So we're coming to you from our humble abode with a grateful heart. Grateful that we have a family. The family of God. And for all that will watch what God has given us to give today through the Holy Ghost. Pastor Buck Stanley, Pastor Nikki Stanley. She's playing a song on the piano. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Folks, are we really thankful? Maybe we need to go to a third world country and spend a month or two. Maybe we need to go and spend uh, a month in Russia, China, Iran. I guarantee you, when you set your foot back on the good old United States of America soil, you'll be given thanks. See, God's blessed our country. And we keep saying, God bless America. God has blessed America. Yes. Have we blessed God with a thankful and grateful heart? Oh, the Lord has done everything for us to give us eternal life. Jesus and the Father has given us the Holy Ghost Amen. to help us on our journey home. Don't get too comfortable here on this earth. Amen. God's people, we're just wayfaring strangers. Amen. And God, the Holy Ghost, is using us to bless others as He blesses us. Right before we came on, there was a man that came to my door and knocked handed me a check and said my wife and I believe in what you're doing don't stop and I thought wow God knows how to encourage us in our time of being downtrodden Amen. but I feel good today that there's a God in heaven that's watching over his people Oh, I think before I pray, we need to sing a little bit of this. It's called Give Thanks. Would you help me sing it, Pastor Nikki? Yes. Give, give thanks with the grateful heart.
Father in heaven, as we come before your throne of mercy and grace this day, we just want to thank you for waking us up this morning in our right mind. We want to thank you for getting us on our way today. We want to thank you for the blood running warm in our veins. We want to thank you for the air that we breathe. We want to thank you, dear Father, our darling Jesus. Thank you for taking care of every need that we have. Your servant David, King David, said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. And Lord, we just come today, we just come to thank you, to give praise and honor and glory for our Creator, the one that formed us in our mother's womb, the one that brought us into this world. And we all have a purpose. You give us all a purpose. Help us all, Lord, to seek your face and to do your will. God, Father God, darling Jesus, I know the purpose for my life, but there's many out there struggling. There's many out there that are fearful. There's many out there wandering in darkness. And I pray that someone will watch today, that they'll see the light. They'll see the light, the marvelous light that came to this world. The Son of the living God, our Messiah, our soon coming King. God, we believe by the signs of the times, that it's close, so close to your return. So help us, Lord. Fill us to overflowing. And for those that do not know you as their Savior, oh, let someone today watch that will receive Christ. Let some dear brother or sister that's struggling be able to overcome by the Word. Have your way now, Lord, and forgive us of our sins. God, we know that things will never get better because we've crossed the line with you, and it'll only get better if our country will turn back to you, God. Yes, Lord, I thank you for it all in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Pastor Nikki, is all well today? All is well. I'm is safe good. in the Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs> well, uh, have you put your hand in his hand today? I did, 42 years ago and every day since. And you've not let go? Not let go. No, no, no. He's all powerful. He's all loving. He's everything I need. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in just a minute, Pastor Nicky's going to bring us a word. But right now, this is an old song that we've been singing for many years. And Nicky did the soundtrack to it, and it's so pretty. We hope you'll enjoy it. Come on, let's put our hands together before we sing.
today. Just want to thank God for you. Come on. Amen. Oh, isn't the Lord good? I pray that you really know Jesus, and if you don't, that you're getting to know him better and better. I've been walking with Jesus for 42 years, and you know, there are things we don't understand when we're first born again. All we understand is that God set us free from our old sinful nature, Amen. and he filled us with love and joy. And we just want to tell everybody that Jesus saved us, and Jesus can save them too. Isn't that true with you? If you don't know this, if you haven't had that experience of being born again and having your sin forgiven, I pray that today you would ask God, is Jesus really who he says he is? Is he the Son of God come in the flesh to pay the price for my sin? Did he pave a way for me to have eternal life? God will answer that question. He answered my questions. And, beloved Christians, as I've grown in the Lord, he has shown me through his word, reading his word over and over and over and learning as I go through the things that happen in life, he has shown me that he has all power through his name. He said, ask anything in my name and it'll be done. And so, you know, as we grow as Christians, we begin to exercise the power in his name, the power that he's given us. You know, he put his signet ring on our hand when we came back to him. 
He gave us authority in his name. We can stamp something with his name and say, in Jesus' name, may it be done. Amen. And I, this, this coming uh, Friday, tomorrow, uh, I'm having my weekly Bible study with some women here at the campground in Indian Meadows. And we have been reading through the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians tells you who you are in Christ, that you're sealed, that you're safe. And it tells you that Jesus paid the way, that he did it all. And it tells us that in the past, before the Lord opened our eyes to the truth that we were sinners in need of a Savior, we were under the control and power of Satan. He could use us any way he chose. You may not believe that or understand that, but read the word. That's what it says. And I know that God changed my life and that all I've wanted to do for 42 years is to love my Savior and to please Him yes. with my life. Yes. He has done so much for me. And as we got into Ephesians, the book of Ephesians chapter 6, talks about putting on the whole armor of God. And the Lord's put it on my heart to share with you that if you're not walking in that power of the Spirit, that He wants you to learn and grow and see who you are in Christ, that you have power in His name to come against the wiles of the devil. He says, Paul says this to the church in Ephesus, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. You and I know we don't have any power. He's saying, be, but be strong in the Lord Jesus. Put on the Lord Jesus. Be strong in His power, in His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Back in Paul's day, there were Roman soldiers in the city, and they were covered with this armor. They had a, a breastplate on, they had a helmet on, they had a strong belt, a belt that was both uh, a wide, made out of leather and, and metal, and they had uh, shoes on their feet, and they had a a shield in front of them, and that wasn't just a little old round shield. No, it was a great big shield that would even cover their whole body if needed. And Paul says this, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. To me, that whole armor of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our armor. We must yeah. be born again. We must be abiding in Jesus in order to have the power and authority in His name to come against the wiles of the devil. Amen. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Beloved, we can see that today more than ever. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Here in this country, we see such, such wickedness and such chaos. And what's really happening is there is a battle going on between God's realm and and Satan's realm and he Amen. is angry and Amen. he is using people that are not born again people that are not walking in the Spirit of God he's using them for his purpose to defy God to destroy to ruin whatever God has created yes. every single person on this earth has been created by God every person is special to him Every person, he cares about them and wants them to come to him. And beloved, during this time of the, the virus 
and all of this rebellion that's going on and, and um, I don't know what all to call it, just chaotic behavior, looting, burning, destroying, wanting things to change somehow. People don't understand. We have to forgive them and love them and draw them to the Lord. And that's what people, Christians, are doing today. They're going into the midst of some of these battles in our large cities in, in uh, the United States. And they are bringing the good news. They're bringing the salvation message. Yeah. Only God can bring peace. Only God can bring joy and love. Only God can do it. We can't do it in our own power and strength. Amen. Way back in old, old times in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, they tried to, to build the Tower of Babel. They wanted to rise up and be up as high as God. They couldn't do it, and God didn't want them to do it. He wanted them to come home and be one with him to yeah. realize that he was their father Amen. he was their love the love of their life that he wanted to lead and guide and have a family yeah. and because we went our own way he sent his son there had to be a payment there had to be justice done for the sin of the whole world and only a perfect sacrifice could do that that's what God said. God sets the rules. And he said, unless there is the shedding of the blood of a perfect sacrifice, there's no forgiveness of sin. So Jesus came and paid the price. And those of us that believe become his brothers and sisters. We become daughters and sons to the almighty God. We become part of the family. And here on earth, he's given us authority in his spirit to come against the wiles of the devil. Let me read a little more. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. We can't be righteous in ourselves. It's Jesus' righteousness that we have, the breastplate of righteousness, when we ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins. Oh, how wonderful. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We have the word of peace to give to people that are angry, that are hurt, that are wounded, that just want to blame somebody else for for their lives or what they're going through we have the truth we have the peace to give them Jesus Christ above all taking the shield of faith beloved keep that faith strong and if it's getting weak ask the Lord to strengthen your faith that you may be able to stand that you might discern the wiles of the devil Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You know, those darts are being thrown at us every day by the demons. They want to destroy our faith. But no, take that shield of faith and cause those darts to, to fall away. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Beloved, are you praying? Let's pray in the Spirit. The Spirit of God moves on us to pray, to do what He would have us do, to come against the wiles of the devil. The Lord wants us to be strong in him beloved today if you're not walking in the power of the spirit ask God to show you how to do that how to be one with him how to be used of him to come against the wiles of the devil let's stand strong okay pastor Buck Amen. give us a closing word before we sing there's power 
in, in the blood. blood. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, I want to close with these words right here. Yeah. Until our country turns to God. Yes. Until us born again Christians. Until we start hungering and thirsting for the things of God. Don't expect things to get better. No. Don't expect things to get better. You know, I noticed... Pastor Nikki, that for the last six, eight months that we've been doing our good news, we'll have people to click on for maybe just a few seconds. And then they'll click off because there's no hunger and thirst for the things of God. Amen. And how can we expect as a nation that God is blessed how can we expect anything to get better until we turn back to God Amen. and start acknowledging Him and hunger and thirst for the Word? Amen. There's life in the Word, yes. as Pastor Joyce Myers says. Yes. There's life in the Word. It's a sword of the Spirit. Yes. And we should hunger for everything that concerning God we should hunger and thirst for. Yes. Now you have the choice. You can click on and Bucky Nicky Stanley's live. You can click on and you can see where God has called Pastor Nicky and, and me to just bring forth the good news. But those that will click on and then click off and go somewhere else, surfing on Facebook, I would say until you and me start hungering for the things of God, mm. why should we expect things to get better? Amen. Oh, lost person today, God loves you. Yes. Won't you turn your life over to Him? There's power in the blood. Amen. Until tomorrow... We just want to say we love you. We're yes. going to close with this song. There is power in the blood. And I'm talking about the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The only way we can be forgiven of our sins and transgressions against God Amen. is through the blood of His Son. Oh, let's put our hands together. We'll see you tomorrow.
Thank you.